Hi guys, welcome to the hard pour. I've already brewed the beer, but I didn't feel like I went over a thorough enough explanation of what you're going to need that isn't already included in the Brewer's Best Beer Kit. I'm going to leave this in the description also if you want to uh, refer to that later. You are going to need a five gallon, at least, pot to brew in. You're going to need sanitizer and a spray bottle to put the sanitizer in. You are going to need brewing cleaner. This is an oxidized cleaner, not OxyClean. You are going to need a long stem thermometer. You're going to need a funnel. You're going to need a large spoon. You're going to need brewing cleaning brushes. Uh, I have two styles, L-shaped and straight. You are going to need a copper wart chiller. You are going to need a large tub and ice. Preferably you're going to want to have uh, availability of a garden hose. And last but not least, you're going to need a five and a six gallon carboy. Also, with the carboy is going to be an airlock and a specially fitted cork for whatever airlock you choose. That's the items that you'll need for brewing from a Brewer's Best kit. Time for the video. Hi guys, welcome back to the Hard Pour. Today we are going to be brewing a red ale from Brewer's Best. It's a kit, gives you everything in it that you're going to need. Uh, this is the first time I'm opening it. So when you typically open these up, they will come with LME, liquid malt extract, two cans. This is your sugar. This is what's going to make your beer have flavor and give it the alcohol content. You're going to get some crushed brown supreme and chocolate barley. These are your grains. These add, give added flavor, but most of your bulk is going to come from that LME. We have Tetanang pellets, which is the hops that they recommend, and Willamette pellets, which is an alpha acid, also hops. So these are the two hops that they recommend with their specific recipe. Um, when you're doing a kit, it's really simple. Just follow their directions, which are here. But if you're like me, when I was first starting out, um, I wanted to see somebody do it before I just started reading and going on myself. So if you get Brewer's Best, this is what it's going to be. Two other things that you'll notice in here are bottle caps and sugar. These are only going to be used if you're bottling the beer. You can keg it, which would be using CO2 in a keg, so obviously you wouldn't need caps or bottling sugar. But for this case, we will be kegging, so we're not going to need these. But you can save them and use them later for your own recipes if you choose to bottle. Also, you're going to see one of these cheap grade socks. Um, these are what you put the grains into steep in the water, which you're going to see later. Other than that, you're going to have your yeast. Won't need this until after all the brewing is done, but will need it. And that is the entire containment of the box, minus some uh, advertisements, basically. Let's get started. So getting started with this kit, uh, first step is to thoroughly clean and sanitize all equipment, utensils that will come in contact with the ingredients. This is extremely important. Everything needs to be completely sanitized during the entire process. If you even think it gets dirty, sanitize it. Anything that comes in contact with bacteria that gets into your beer is going to ruin the taste and it's not going to turn out the way it's supposed to. Star Sand is the brand that I use. This is an $8.99 bottle. Uh, you pour a little bit into water, mix it together. I put it in a spray 
you can just make a big vat of it and dip things into it, that's fine. For example, I have my spoon here. I just spray it with sanitizer. Anytime I'm going to use it or think it might have been dirty from me touching it, spray it. As soon as the solution hits it, it's instantly clean. We are boiling three gallons of water. Uh, you are going to start with three gallons, you'll finish with five. So you want to make sure your carboy is at least a six gallon carboy that you're going to ferment in. The reason why you're going to need a six gallon carboy as opposed to a five gallon carboy is because when the beer is fermenting it's going to raise up and you don't want it to explode out the top which has happened to us and it makes a big mess and you ruin your beer. The next step is getting your water between 150 and 165 degrees. You can use one of these long stem thermometers to measure that and then you're going to pour your grains into what we call a grain bag and steep them in. The entire time you want to make sure your temperature doesn't go above or below that range. When choosing a heat source to make your beer, I recommend using gas heat. This is better than electric heat because you get a lot more control whenever you need to vary temperatures. My temperature is in between 150 and 165 degrees. Right about 155, give or take, I lowered the temperature a little bit to keep it there so that it doesn't keep increasing and get towards boiling. The top of the bag will be open, the bottom will be closed. Just open the top, cut a nice little hole in your grain bag. Let them go down in. A little dusty. Make sure you get the entire contents of the plastic bag into the steeping grain bag. Easy enough, you just take the top end, tie a small knot. You don't want any of the grain coming out for any reason. You're going to throw it away altogether also. Small knot, very simple. Just drop it right down into the water. I usually take the top end, there's a handle on the side of my pot, and I just lightly put a small little knot in so it's not dangling down near the flame. As you can see, the grain will start seeping out of the bag. Now you're going to steep the grains for 20 minutes. All the while you want to keep an eye on that temperature to make sure it doesn't leave that 150 to 165 degree range. We're right at 165, so I'm going to back down the heat. All right, welcome back. We've hit our 20 minute mark. So it's time to remove the grains from the what is now wort. You're going to want to let this drip. You're not going to want to squeeze it because grain will fall out in. You don't want that in your wort. Once you get just a little bit of dripping, it's you could stand here for hours and it would continue to drip. Just go ahead, take the entire bag, throw it away. No more use of that. The next step is to bring your wort to a rolling boil.
next step is to add your liquid malt extract. This is going to be all the thick molasses style sugar and this is going to add alcohol content to your beer once you add yeast later. This is going to bring it from a rolling boil down in temperature. So what you need to do is get these in as quick as possible, get it back up to a rolling boil. One thing to remember is when you pour this in, it's going to hit the bottom of your pot directly and you don't want it to burn at the bottom of your pot. It's going to be hard to scrape up. It's going to be hard to clean later. It's just more of a headache for you. So keep your spoon in one hand and stir while you dump it in. We're going to be dumping both of these in at the same time. All right. Once all the LME is in, turn up the heat, bring it to another rolling boil. We are at a rolling boil. It is time to add the Tetmang hops. Only these, not the other kind. Those come at a later time. Once you add these, you're going to bring it to a rolling boil. If it goes down, it shouldn't. It should stay at a boil because it's only a little bit of hops. You'll smell a uh, very strong scent of a very hoppy flavor, which is good if they're nice and fresh. So just dump them in, start your timer. You're going to be boiling for 55 minutes without activity, but don't take your eye off of it. As I said, it will boil over with sugar in it from this point forward if you're not paying attention and it gets too hot. So I'll see you in 55 minutes. All right, we have been boiling for 55 minutes. It's just at a slow rolling boil. I've been slowly stirring it over that time. And now it's time to add the second row of hops. Just cut open the top, drop them right in. Similar in smell. Once you drop these in, you're going to boil for another five minutes and then we're terminating the boil. So start the timer now for five minutes. During this five minute boil, you're going to insert what's called a wort chiller. This is a copper tubing which water will run through to cool down the wort. Whenever you're taking your wort from boiling down to about 65, 75 degrees, you want to do that as quickly as possible and this is going to help with that. I generally will spray this down with sanitizer. It says that you don't have to because the wort's boiling and it will kill all germs, but I like to play it safe anyways. So I generally will spray this down with sanitizer. Once it's completely covered in it, insert it into the wart. For the last five minutes, careful to keep these tubes away from the flame. And continue to finish the boil. You're going to want one of these large tubs. You're going to fill it about halfway up with water and put ice in it. Whenever you dip your pot down into the ice water, that will also help you cool your wort down more quickly, more efficiently. And then you'll run the water through the wort chiller. Keep your thermometer handy because you're going to be taking temperatures the entire time. And we will show you that next step. So we brought the wort out dunked it down into ice water and as you can see the wart chiller connects easily to your garden hose. The water is not going to come in contact with the warts because it just goes in one end 
and comes out the other end as you can see. We're trying to take the wort from boiling down to 70 degrees as quickly as possible. It's a warm day, so it's gonna take a little bit longer than normal, but anything under 20 minutes is good. We're currently sitting at about 120 degrees and dropping, so we will cut and be back with you in a few minutes. We're at 70 degrees now, so it's time to pull the pot out of the water, take it over, and put it into the carboy. So I'll get with you back in the garage. Once you've poured the entire contents of your wort that was in your pot into the carboy, you're going to want to fill it up to the five gallon mark. My five gallon mark is going to be just above this line right here. I know that because I took a gallon container and filled it up with five gallons of water and found out where the mark is. Any carboy you may have probably will be the same and you're probably going to be about this point, but you won't know for sure until you check. The reason why you won't know for sure how much water to put in is because you started out with three gallons, but some boiled off. So it's not going to be exactly two gallons that needs to go in, it's going to be a little bit more and how much could vary. The last step is going to be adding your yeast and putting in the airlock. Once your yeast is in there to help activate it, you're going to want to very carefully cap off the top and shake the yeast through. Now, you've sanitized your airlock just insert the cork as I call it but it is rubber with the airlock in you will see on your airlock there are two lines you're going to fill up with water to the top of these two lines what that's going to let happen is this wart is going to bubble and when it bubbles the air needs to escape and the water that's in here won't let bacteria get in. So you're gonna pour halfway through so that the water can, it will bubble. It will let all the air out. It doesn't take much water to get to the point where you need to be. Very important that you make sure that this is all the way down. Whenever it gets wet around the outside of this cork, it'll tend to want to slide out. And when it slides out, it can fall and then you won't be around to notice to put it back in and bacteria can get into your beer. The last and final step is taking this wart, covering it with a blanket to keep it nice and dark and keeping it in a dry, cool environment. I personally have a supply closet that's about 50 to 60 degrees and that's where I keep mine. Anything like that will work. You just want to keep it out of the way so it's nice and dark and keep it in there for about two weeks. It's going to ferment. We will transfer to a secondary fermenter and go from there. So thanks for watching the hard pour and this was Brew Day.